To most Catholics, St. John from Kenty, otherwise known as John Canty or John Cantius, is an obscure saint. But even in Europe, probably few people know of Pope John Paul II's deep and lifelong devotion to this professor saint. Only 13 miles from the Holy Father's own birthplace, John was born in the small southern Polish town of Kenty on June 24, 1390. At the age of 23, he registered for studies at the Jagiellonian University, located in the not-too-distant city of Krakow, then the capital of the Polish kingdom. He studied philosophy before entering the priesthood at the university. After ordination, John became a professor at the university, eventually rising to be the head of the philosophy and theology departments. During this period in history, priests and monks dedicated much time to quiet study and, most of all, copying manuscripts. In this age before the printing press, the only way to replicate anything was to manually write it out. John spent many hours of his life copying down Holy Scripture and other theological writings. Even today, 18,000 of his handwritten pages survive, and that's only believed to be a small fraction of his life's work. John worked hard for many years without any sign of success. He was very careful not to demonstrate his impatience or anger. He was known for his generosity and kindness. He rose in popularity which put him at odds with some of the other professors. Rivals who resented John's popularity cooked up false charges against him. John was not even allowed to appear at his own hearing or testify in his own defense. With rising dissension, he was sent to serve at a parish in Olkusa, a small rural town in Bohemia which is now part of the Czech Republic. His parishioners were not welcoming, and they had every right to do so. And it was not a job for which John was well prepared either. However, he was determined that his new parishioners would not suffer because of what happened to him. But there was no overnight miracle waiting for him in Olkuz. He was nervous and afraid of his new responsibilities. And despite the energy he put into his new job, the parishioners remained hostile. But John's plan was very simple and came not from the mind, but from the heart. He let his genuine interest and concern for these people show in everything he did. He knew that people could never be bullied into love, so he gave them what he hoped they would find in themselves. After eight years, when he was transferred back to Krakow, he had been so successful that these once hostile people followed him several miles down the road, begging him to stay. John was now reassigned back to Krakow. He was reinstated at the University of Krakow, where he became professor of sacred scripture. John Canty was renowned for his scholarship and his simple and even austere life. He had no bed, slept on the floor, and never ate meat. When his superiors told him that he was being too hard on himself and endangering his health, he remarked that the desert fathers, who lived very austere lives, lived to a remarkable old age. Although honored by the nobility of Krakow, he was well known to the needy whom he favored. 
On several occasions, he distributed all that he had to the poor. Devoted to the truth, he told his students to fight all false opinions, but to do so with courtesy. He made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. His goods and his money were always at their disposal, and time and again they took advantage of him. He kept only the money and clothes absolutely needed to support himself. He made four pilgrimages to Rome, carrying his luggage on his back. One day, he was accosted while traveling and robbed of the few pennies he had. His robber asked him if he had any more, and when John told him that he did not, the robber left in anger. At that point, John placed his hands in his pocket and discovered an additional gross. Unwilling to even unintentionally tell a falsehood, he chased after the robber to give him his last cent. The robber thought he was being pursued and a foot race ensued. John Canty won the race and with the robber lying on the ground, John handed him his last penny. The man turned from his life of crime because of John Canty's goodness and his absolute devotion to the truth. One of the most famous stories surrounding Canty is the supposed miracle of the jug, depicted in the painting hanging above the altar in Chicago's St. John Cantius Church. In June of 1464, an elderly Canty was walking through the market square in Krakow when he observed a weeping girl with a broken jar. It was a servant girl who had been carrying a jug of milk for her stern mistress when she had dropped and broken it. She was crying for fear of punishment. Moved with compassion, Canty took the broken jar from the girl's trembling hands and prayed upon it. Miraculously, when he fitted the pieces together, they remained whole and the jug was fixed. He then told the girl to fill the jug with water from a nearby spring. When she brought the jug filled with water, Canty again took the jug and prayed upon it. When he returned it to the girl, the water inside had turned to milk. John taught his students this philosophy again and again. Fight all error, but do it with good humor, patience, kindness, and love. Harshness will damage your own soul and spoil the best cause. John Canty died on Christmas Eve in 1473, with Krakow being convulsed with sorrow. He provides us with a model of devotion to the truth, love of poverty and simplicity, and a model of charity. Grant, we beseech thee, O Almighty God, that by the example of St. John, thy confessor, we may make progress in the science of the saints, and by showing mercy to others, may obtain through his merits forgiveness from thee, through our Lord. Amen.